to quickly highlight this. I'm sure some of you guys have checked it out. I hope you have. And if you haven't, please do. This amazing, amazing documentary, courtesy of Traplor Ross, which is King Vaughan Rap's first serial killer. It's doing crazy amounts of views. It's, cr it's creating a, much, a bunch of conversation and controversy within hip hop media and the community at large. But it was a really well put together flipping documentary. It's, uh, I think the original cut was closer to four hours. Now I think with some edits, it's, it's about three hours and a half. But it's still a really insightful documentary that basically details and kind of pieces together King Vaughan's life before he passed away. And essentially, Trapolo Ross, who's a kind of hip hop documentarian, um, he basically put this documentary together that is maybe alleging that King Vaughan maybe have he's maybe some way responsible for uh, for more than ten bodies. He may have personally killed more than 10 people during his very short time on this earth and especially during his time rapping, which is pretty nuts. I think most people that kind of were fans of his music, myself included, knew that he was really about this life and clearly kind of lived his raps. Um, and it also wasn't all just like a work of fiction. But I don't think most of us kind of had in our heads that he had 10. I think at the last time of me checking when I was kind of locked in on his music, I think I kind of had in my head that maybe five, you know, people that he may have had on his jacket. But now Traplo Ross is basically alleging he may have more than 10 on there. But for some reason, this has created some big controversy within the kind of community and hip hop and people in Chicago are really upset and basically saying that Traplo Ross is basically adding to the troubles and to the beef that's going on there by highlighting all the people that King Vaughan may have killed before he was killed and essentially saying that Traplo Ross may be responsible for people seeking revenge and retaliation because of what they may have learned on the documentary but i still think in my opinion as maybe somewhat tasteless as some of these channels can be on youtube because there's a bunch of them where these youtube channels that basically highlight and somewhat promote and glorify all of the kids out there who are spinning on their ops and you know essentially doing what they're doing in their raps and whatnot even though there's some stuff can be really tasteless i think at the core of it the only way to stop all of this stuff from happening is to get the rappers themselves to stop killing each other. That's the main part of it, to get these guys to, you know, to get them out of gangs, to maybe improve their situations wherever they live in their local area, maybe to kind of, you know, push the politicians to invest more in resources and things that kids can do so they don't have to resort to joining gangs for protection or picking up a gun and stuff. Those are the things that need to be done, I feel like, um, first to kind of get things back to some semblance of normality before you start blaming before you start blaming people online who are essentially reporting on stuff that said because the Traplon Ross documentary for the most part all of the stuff that he's been able to pull has been from King Vaughan's own Twitter account because there's been periods of time where he's been tweeting about you know killings before they've even made it on the news so clearly he's had some information he's linked to it or something so it's even that brazen or his raps or his Instagram lives and stuff but it's all stuff that he's said himself. And now people associated with King Vaughan or associated with O Block or associated with Little Dirk or whatever it may be are now upset that YouTubers are basically piecing it together and putting it into documentaries, getting views from it, making money from it or promoting it or basically highlighting to his ops what he actually may have done. But all that information is already out there already. So putting that, put that blame on these journalists is unfair. I think they may contribute some part to it, but I think putting all the information or blame on them is really unfair. I think the blame needs to be kind of equally partitioned out to all parties in terms of what they do, in terms of how they're affecting people's lives overall. But I think to blame precisely Trap Ross is unfair but that aside doc, hip, YouTube documentary wise it's a phenomenal um, the amount of work that went into it is crazy um, really really well done documentary loads of p bits and pieces that I kind of forgot about along the way because again like I said I was a huge King Vaughan fan when he was around and he kind of you know he was kind of gone too soon and kind of didn't get a chance to really um, fulfill his potential um, Welcome to O Block is still an absolute slapper as well so check that out if you need a good album to smash on on the gym while you're lifting weights it's a real big one I really enjoyed that one but in general it's a really well put together documentary and I really recommend you check it out if you haven't already and even if you don't know much about King Vaughan I think Traplo Ross is a really good um, you know 
he's able to kind of present that sh- that stuff really well. So even if you're not a fan of the music or you don't know nothing about King Vaughn, he's definitely going to um, make you interested and kind of keep you locked in. Documentary title is King Vaughn Raps First Serial Killer. If you want to check it out, check it out. It's available on YouTube and it's doing bits already numbers on there and people are absolutely loving it. So please check it out if you haven't already. Please check it out if you haven't already. 